What's up guys, Justin here with DCGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So one of the things I don't think gets talked about enough when we're talking about Blender is the amazing number of add-ons that come bundled with the program when you open it up. So there's a number of amazing tools that you can use to do different things. In this one I wanted to talk about the extra objects add-in that gives you the ability to add new kinds of meshes inside of your 3D models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to get these extra objects, you can add them by going to Edit, Preferences, and then under Add-ons, you can just look for Extra, and you want to look for the option labeled Add Mesh Extra Objects. So what I thought that I'd do is I'd walk you through the different kinds of objects that you can add using this free add-on. This comes built in with Blender, so you don't have to go download it or anything. All you have to do is enable it. And I will also label these in the lower left-hand corner as I go so that you can skip to the ones that you're interested in if that's something you want to do. And so this adds a number of different tools. So if you do a Shift A and go to Add Mesh, you can see how you have a number of additional tools in here that you didn't have in here before. And so I wanted to kind of talk through um, some of the different tools that get added in here. So the first one I wanted to talk about is the 3D function surfaces or the math surfaces. So these are basically surfaces or um, tools that create surfaces using math. So for example, um, this first option adds this kind of like uh, kind of tensile structure look and you can actually adjust the number of subdivisions in here but you can also adjust the equation to adjust the way this looks. So if I was to add like a times 0.5 in here you can see how you could adjust this equation and it's going to mathematically adjust the way that this is going to create a 3D object. So you can use math in order to do this. Notice how you can adjust the X and Y size. Um, there are no operator presets on this one, however, there are on the other. So if I go to XYZ math surface, you can see how this one creates completely different kinds of shapes. And notice how for this one, there's also operator presets. So you can use these presets to create different kinds of mathematical shapes, and then you can adjust them using the functions that are in here. One thing to note is that each one of these, um, each shape is going to have a different mathematical formula, and so it's going to have different things that you can adjust in order to make changes to them. So these are going to be unique to the kinds of shapes that you're creating, but they make these shapes really customizable, allowing you to create some really um, cool stuff using mathematical functions. So this tool also gives you the ability to add different kinds of solids. So like regular solids, you can also select like uh, like dodecahedrons or icosahedrons, other mathematical shapes in here, as well as the ability to, as well as the ability to create different kinds of triangles. So you can create triangles based on um, an isosceles or a scalene. So going back to grade school geometry, those different kinds of triangles you can create in here. So you can use this in order to create mathematically correct shapes inside a blender. All right, so next is Beam Builder. So if you go into Mesh and uh, under Extras, you can see how there's an option in here for Beam Builder now. What Beam Builder does is it allows you to create different kinds of beam profiles. So things like I-beams or T-beams, other things like that. You can adjust everything from the height of those to the width. You can also add tapers. So you can use this to create structural shapes inside a blender. Note that the length of these objects is also adjustable as well. Gears gives you the ability to add fully adjustable gears inside a blender. So all of these different features like the teeth and the angles contained inside of these, these are all going to be fully adjustable. So you can bring in a simple gear or you can make changes to adjust everything from the number of teeth to the radius, um, the taper that's in here. One thing I don't know about this tool is if you were to 3D print this, if these are actually mathematically correct in the sense that they would actually work as gears, but I do know that the level of customization contained in here is very high. So you can use this to create all sorts of different gears inside of your 3D models. So in addition, there's also, so in addition, this also gives you the ability to create a worm gear, which is gonna be a gear that's more cylindrical, um, that runs kind of along a pipe and would spin in order to drive another gear. So not only can you create a simple regular gear, you can also create a worm gear with this tool inside a blender. 
So gemstones gives you the ability to add three different kind of gemstones in here. Um, it's labeled diamonds, but the actual add-on itself that's bundled in here is called gemstones. This basically allows you to create three different kinds of gemstones. So two different kinds of diamonds and then another gem. Notice these are all adjustable from a height standpoint and also a segment standpoint. So if you want to create some custom gems to use in your models, this is a great add-on to do that. Honeycomb creates a dynamic honeycomb shape inside of Blender. So what this allows you to do is this allows you to create a honeycomb mesh um, where you can adjust the number of rows and columns as well as the size of the, the honeycomb. So this is great for things like if you have some kind of a mesh on a computer or something like that, um, you can use this in order to create, create that shape as well as you could extrude this in order to make this a 3D shape. So if you're looking for a quick honeycomb shape, this is the tool that can do that. The Minger sponge is going to be a cube that gets subdivided into multiple different cubes. So this is going to be an interesting shape because um, it really doesn't do a whole lot from a practical geometry standpoint, but it looks really cool. I could see you using this to really quickly create some sci-fi landscapes or something like that. So notice how this just continually subdivides. Um, you need to be a little bit careful when you add additional subdivisions to this or add different levels to this because it creates a lot of different geometry, but it creates a really cool shape um, that I think you could build some really cool things out of. It's more just a fun tool. The pipe joints object gives you the ability to create a number of different kinds of joints that are fully adjustable in here. So you can um, add anything from a single pipe pipe joint or you can adjust the radius and also the uh, the turn angle or there's also different options in here for different kinds of joints so different T's and other things like that as well as the last option which allows you to basically add as many different pipes coming into a joint as you want to so if you're looking for customizable pipe joints um, this should work very well for you the step pyramid does exactly what it sounds like. It adds a pyramid with steps on it. So what this gives you the ability to do is this allows you to create that pyramid and adjust the number of segments to um, adjust the smoothness of this shape that you've created, as well as giving you the ability to customize the depth of each step, um, the number of steps, things like that. So this allows you to create a simple step pyramid really quickly inside of your models. The round cube function allows you to create a number of different kinds of shapes based on a quad sphere. So basically what this does is this creates different shapes and there's a number of different presets in here um, that are based on a quad sphere, allowing you to create anything from this quad sphere to also giving the ability to create like capsule shapes or other adjustable shapes like that as well. So in addition, there's also shapes that are, are a little bit closer to like rounded off boxes, but they're built on quad spheres. The star tool allows you to create different variations of star shapes inside of your models. So you can adjust everything from the number of points on here to the length that the arms go out. You can also adjust both the outer and inner radiuses and the thickness. So if you need to build anything built on a star shape, um, this tool should have the functions that you're looking for. There's three tools built in for creating different kinds of torus shapes. So the torus shapes are going to give you the ability to create everything from a twisted torus, which is going to be a torus that does exactly what it sounds like. It has a twist associated with it. Um, you can adjust the number of twists that are in here, as well as adjusting the different features of this to make this anywhere from just kind of a standard looking torus to almost more of a ribbon shape. There's also a mesh in here called the super toroid. And basically what that is, is that's more of a standard torus, but it gives you the ability to adjust um, all of the things that we talked about and then a little bit more. So inner and outer radius, also the ability to adjust the number of segments that are in here. And you can also adjust if this uh, kind of um, scales in or outward. So you can adjust the direction as well as the way that the geometry on the torus reacts. So if you want to customize a torus, this is a great mesh for doing that. And then the third torus tool, the torus knot, basically brings in a torus knot and it gives you three different uh, three different input functions that are in here. So there's not a ton of customization allow allowed in here. You can basically adjust the amount of geometry and then the kind of knot that this adds. But if you need to add a torus knot, this function will do that. 
the teapot option is basically the classic teapot that you're used to seeing inside of 3D modeling programs as kind of a sample mesh. So you can adjust the smoothness of this, but it's basically just a teapot shape. There's also a preset down below for um, a teaspoon. So if you want to test uh, mesh or render something, something like that, this is a great mesh for that. It's basically just a sample 3D object that you can quickly insert into your scenes. So this next tool is a nice little function that allows you to add a single vertex. And so on the surface, that doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but the cool thing about being able to add the single vertex is if you go into edit mode and you uh, go into vertex editing mode, basically what this allows you to do is this allows you to extrude the vertex. You can take this single vertex, making sure that you're in um, vertex select mode, you can extrude this in order to create a line. So what that allows you to do is this is probably the closest that Blender has at the moment to a traditional line tool like you see inside of a CAD software. But you can use this to extrude this vertex, then you can fill it in in order to create a face. So you could just select all of these, tap the F key to fill this in. So the extra vertex tool can act like a line tool inside a blender. And then finally, my favorite tool contained inside of the uh, Extra Objects add-in is the Wall Factory add-in. And what the Wall Factory does is this allows you to basically create like a medieval style wall in here, and it's mathematically doing this by generating the different blocks. So all of this is fully adjustable, meaning you can adjust things like your height or your width in order to make your wall as complex as you want it to be. And so in addition to being able to adjust these and also to adjust the spacing, um, so things like the grout spacing between the objects, you can also add and adjust windows. So you can use this to add different openings to your wall, as well as you can add the little turrets at the top of the wall as well. So overall, just kind of a fun tool that allows you to quickly generate a wall with actual geometry in here. So it, it does give you some kind of weird results sometimes. So you may just have to play around with this in order to get the results that you want. But overall, I just love playing with this one. I'm excited to do some more interesting stuff with this in the future. So that's kind of an overview of the tools contained in the extra objects add-on for Blender. Uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about these objects, and if you'd like to hear any more about any of these in particular. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.